Pick an element. Gold. First one I heard. Okay? Well, what if I asked you to find the binding energy for gold? Okay? And I'd have to give you uh, the isotope. So let's just take, I'd have to give you which isotope. We'll take 197. I know that one's stable. Okay, we want to find the binding energy. How do you do that? We're going to use uh, energy <coughs> e equals mc squared. Oh, the change here. Equals mc squared. And then uh, well, first we have to write the reaction. So I need the number of protons and neutrons. How many protons? 79. And how many neutrons? Hundred and eighteen? Okay, get out your calculators and you can double check that. So you would write seventy nine one one proton plus hundred and eighteen uh, one zero neutrons goes to gold uh, and on the bottom is seventy nine on the top one ninety seven. Okay? Then you would calculate the change in mass is your next step. That's the mass of the products minus the mass of the reactor. Uh, the mass of the products is uh, the mass of gold minus the mass of the reactants. Well, there's 79 mass of the proton minus 118 mass of the neutron. Then, because I made up the problem, I don't have these numbers, but these numbers would be given in the problem or in the back of the exam to several significant figures, probably four or five. Okay? You'd and so you'd calculate that change in mass. A at that point, oh, there's a question. Uh, I use the distributive property, so if I undistribute, you could do that. And that's the same thing. Okay, whichever you prefer, it works in your mind, algebraically. Yeah? Great question. Would you use the mass on the periodic table for the mass of gold? No. no. You have to do this for a particular isotope. So you should not use the periodic table for this number, even though that has a lot of significant figures. We're doing it for a particular isotope. If I did it for isotope 1 at 98, I'd get a different answer because I had a different number of neutrons. Or 200 or whatever. All right. Then there's two routes you can go that I showed you in class. You could actually come up with other routes. Uh, if you really like Einstein, want to use this formula, then you take the change, you'd say change in energy equals the change in mass, which is that number that you just calculated. But that has what units? U. So you have to convert from U to kilograms. And that conversion I give you on the test, so you need to convert that to kilograms. Second step is you multiply by c squared, which is uh, the 2.9979 times 10 to the 8 meters per second squared. Is that in joules? Yeah, that would be in joules. Joules per nucleon or nuclei. If you wanted joules per gram of something, uh, usually that would be joules per gram of that particular isotope. So you would again use the mass of that isotope. If that happens to equal the periodic table, you're cool. If they say something like it's, it's a mixture that's a periodic table, then you wouldn't. But otherwise, usually you're using whatever numbers they give you instead of the periodic So you don't use the periodic table in this question what I'm saying. Garbage. Okay. Uh, yes? So if you want to go to, um, say, like, per proton or per whatever? Well, you do probably per five grams of something. Five grams of gold. Okay. Then you have to convert. This would be joules per nuclei would be the units. So you'd have to multiply by Avogadro's number. Multiply by the mass, the isotopic mass, to get into grams. Is that okay? Yeah, yeah. Yep, okay. 
Now let's do the other way. It's pretty much the same thing, but you take the change in mass. Again, units of U. And I actually gave you the conversion to go from U to joules. So you can do that too. And that again would be in joules per nuclei. Uh, also, this is joules. You could also go to mega electron volts. That would just be a different conversion. So, But that's it. That's the equals mc squared and binding energy in one. <laughs>